Hello everyone and welcome back to World of Warplanes. This time I'll be taking a look at the tier uh, 6 Japanese light fighter, uh, the A6 M50. Um, so yes, I'll go over the history real quick and then go over the stats and we'll jump into some killer gameplay. So, this is a pretty famous aircraft from World War II, so most of you guys probably would know where it's from, but we'll just go over it anyway. This modification of the A6M confronted Allied fighters until the final days of World War II. A total of 10,449 aircraft of all verifications were produced. It's very specific. <laughs> they could have just said 10,500 or something, but it's, it's very specific. That's kind of interesting. Um, I guess they knew exactly how many they made, which is kind of cool. So, let's take a look at the stats. So, oh, let me extend, expand these real quick so you guys can look at that if you want. Alright. It's got machine gun and auto cannon armament effective in close combat. Um, well, let's look at the guns real quick and then we'll talk about that. So you get these two 13.2 millimeter guns. I'll open the stats so you can look at them if you wish. And you get two 20s. Uh, so it actually has pretty decent firepower. And then also, if you look at it, it's actually got pretty effect pretty good effective range. Um, if you look at it, the firing range of the 13.2s uh, is 1,700 feet, which is actually longer range than... Uh, some of the other machine guns at this tier, uh, it's even better than the Goblin. The Goblin at uh, tier 9 has uh, a lower firing range than the, the, than the machine guns on this plane. And then also you have the 20s that can go past 2,000 feet. You can actually hit almost at uh, 2,300 feet. And so no, Wargaming, that is wrong. Uh, this would be effective in cl uh, close to mid-range. Um, and you really do feel that when you're flying this plane. You can kill planes that are running away from you uh, pretty effectively. Um, and then b w coupled with another stat that we'll go over a little bit later, it really does allow you to avoid heavy fighters, flip around, and get your shots on to him before they get out of your range. So, no, it's, I mean, yes, they are really effective in close combat, right? but they're also pretty effective at mid-range. They're not as short-ranged uh, as some of the other guns, especially at this tier. So no, they're not exclusive to close range. And that's really a nice feature of the A6M5. The next one, we have low survivability and often catches fire. Okay, low survivability, uh, by that it means a rating of 7. It is got the lowest survivability of any plane at tier 6 as far as I'm aware there might be one or two others but as far as I'm aware it's got the lowest survivability so that is a serious downfall of this plane do keep that in mind and because of that whenever you're getting shot you're often uh, you know you do catch fire pretty consistently I guess uh, especially if they put it on there I guess it must have a higher stat than other planes I, I don't really notice it that much, but, uh, you know, it, it's something to keep in mind. And then you have good airspeed and boost. I Sometimes I wonder. They need to probably change these because it should be uh, role-specific rather than generic. Uh, because this does not have good airspeed. You are slow as heck. And, uh, I mean, you're not... You're not fast. You really are not fast. You should not be going from sector to sector in this plane. Uh, just because you are you do have a pretty decent boost, but it's not fantastic. And going from sector to sector just takes way too long. So, you know, don't worry about that. Very high uh, maneuverability in horizontal turns. By very high, they mean the highest at the tier. Uh, you are the most maneuverable at this tier of any plane. But that being said, you do not have the greatest rate of roll. Um, your rate of roll is only 100 degrees per second, 
that is really bad. Uh, so you're not going to be rolling quickly, but in a maneuvering uh, horizontal dogfight, you are the best at the tier. Um, and if you're not best, you're like tied for best. Because <laughs> there's not really anything that can outdo a, a zero uh, stock, you know. And if you have no equipment, no crew skills, you're not going to be able to outturn a zero. Which is pretty sweet. And uh, because you're low airspeed, you actually have a super, super low stall speed of only 56 miles per hour. That is exceptional. So this plane is slow, but you can use that slow ability or that slow speed to, uh, you know, get people to overshoot you. So that's kind of cool. And yeah, your optimum airspeed is only 188 miles per hour. That's really not going to cut it very well. But, you know, the gem, the best part about the plane is its maneuverability uh, in horizontal turns. And then, the last one, it's very effective in low altitude maneuvering combat. Uh, well, maneuvering combat we've already gone over, but low altitude is where this plane shines. Uh, you really cannot get this plane to go even mid-range. You have to keep it low altitude. Uh, it just does not work. With an optimum altitude of only 3,281 feet, that is tragic. Uh, you are really going to have to stay low. And so, it kind of makes this plane kind of strange because while you can still dominate at higher tiers, so while you can still do well in tier 7 matchups, you do the best when you're top tier uh, for the reason that as you go up each tier planes get higher altitude performance and your altitude performance is already trash so if you get stuck in a tier 7 battle usually you'll have planes that just kind of float above your service ceiling and you'll struggle to get up there and once you finally do get up there well now you're sitting duck and you just die so this plane is very niche uh, it does very, very well in some regards, but it is like worst in class in other regards. It is that really strange mixture. It's a very unique plane, and yes. So if I was going to summarize, you have really, really nice firepower uh, with very nice firing range, despite what Wargaming says. Uh, the range is excellent. Uh, I mean, it's not top tier. Uh, you know, there's planes that will fire further than you at this tier. But for what it is, it is very exceptional uh, range. And you can use that to your advantage. If people try to escape you, usually your guns, uh, if you couple it with your boost, can stay with them long enough to get quite a few nice shots on them, which is very nice. Couple that with the best maneuver at, maneuverability at the tier in terms of uh, horizontal turn fight. It really does make this plane exceptional at... Uh, holding certain sectors especially because you have a low airspeed that means that you really don't want to be going from sector to sector but it makes this plane an excellent air defense plane um, so you know if you're sitting at a sector a center objective like an airfield or something you're gonna hold that uh, like no man's business so that's where this plane shines right but then you also have to realize that you have the worst survivability at the tier the worst altitude performance and a terrible airspeed. So with those three attributes, uh, you know, you really are not a boom and zoomer, and you're not designed to take hits. But you have excellent maneuverability and excellent guns. So it's, like I said, it is perfect in certain roles and tragic in other roles. But as long as you're able to accept the fact that it's a turn and burner and an air defense plane, you will be golden. So, that's kind of the little uh, summary real quick. Now we're going to jump over to uh, how you should set this plane up, and then we'll jump in some, into some gameplay. So if we go to the service department, I don't carry a fire extinguisher, but as you saw, uh, Wargaming said this plane catches fire easily, so putting a fire extinguisher might be good, I just never do. Uh, of course I'm using standard ammo, but you can put universal on if you desire. Upgrades. I don't have any equipment on this plane when I flew it. Um, but if I was going to, first you do accuracy because I always do accuracy. 
but the other two slots would be lightweight airframe and control surface adjustment to give yourself uh, even better maneuverability. So that's what I would do. Uh, accuracy, maneuverability. Those are the upgrades. And then uh, when you're getting this plane, I'm pretty sure you're going to have to research every single module. So the first thing I would go for is the 20s. I think these top 20s are excellent. So go for the 20s, then go for the 13.2s. Uh, then I would go for the airframe and then the engine, just because that's how I usually do it. But of course, you know, you could do 20, 13.2, engine, then airframe. It's pretty much interchangeable. Uh, but yep, that's the equipment modules, the upgrades, paint shop. You don't get any free paint schemes, unfortunately. Yep, nothing. You also means you cannot place your beta sticker on there, which drives me crazy. I don't know why it's like that, but it is. And then the crew. Uh, well my crew is actually in the tier 8 plane because that's where I am at so my pilot always travels up the tiers uh, just so I always have a nice pilot in the planes that I'm flying currently so let me go find it real quick come on there we go here's squid yeah this plane looks pretty sweet and uh, I'll probably do a review on it sometime but that's not what we're doing right now looking at the pilot uh, so I do Marksman 1, Marksman 2. Alternatively, if uh, you don't think accuracy in, is an issue for you, uh, then I might suggest doing Aerobatics Expert and Aerodynamics Expert first, just to give yourself even more maneuverability. I mean, you have the best of the tier, but any extra maneuverability just makes the plane an absolute gem. But for me, I always do Marksman 1 and 2, and of course, you know, if you have a 9 skill pilot, then sure, you can get both, but, you know, that's what I would recommend. And with that being said, that's about it for the A6M5. Um, so now I think we're going to jump into some gameplay. But before I forget, before we jump into the gameplay, I just want to announce we are only 15 subscribers away from 100, and I do have something kind of plan something I would like to do for a hundred subscribers so if you would like to see that uh, consider subscribing if you haven't already or maybe uh, share the word and uh, see if you can get someone else to subscribe um, but I do have something planned for a hundred subscribers we're getting kind of close um, I don't I don't normally like give myself plugs like that but we're getting pl pretty close and I just want to see it so with that in mind let's jump into some gameplay Alright, hello everyone, welcome back to the gameplay section. Um, this replay uh, is an absolute monster, I love it a lot, but it's also one of the older replays that I have. Um, I sent it into Zem at Shrike Gaming, and I didn't want to do a video on the same replay right away, so I've been holding out for quite a while. Um, but now, uh, I think it's about time to show this replay in the review I think it's there's no better battle that I could have gotten with this plane it is the best battle I probably could get in this plane unless I got really lucky um but with that in mind that's kinda what it is I start off in the chat kinda goofing off I say I'm a bot don't mind me <laughs> clearly they might mind me but we'll see um, as you can see right away, I'm only going 280 miles per hour and I was in the yellow zone for airspeed. That's pretty terrible. But uh, this boomerang, no issue maneuvering onto him. Absolutely not any issue whatsoever. I went to this garrison first just because I wanted to clear up my bots. I saw that a majority of our bots were going here, so I wanted to quickly take this sector, clear up our bots without them dying immediately, and then head to the airstrip or airfield. Uh, but it looks like our team has already taken the airfield, so nice job team. We took the garrison, cleared them up, now I'm going to the airfield. And that is where I will stay the entire battle, because defending it is the best. Um, but yeah, this, this replay is pretty old. Um, but it's just a really good replay, so I'm going to use it. I'll leave a link in the description to uh, Zem's video on this plane um, on my replay so if you want to see that 
we took out everything that's over here and the rest of the planes are pretty high and I just don't even bother trying to go up to that altitude I'm thinking about going to the garrison because that's where everyone is but I saw a guy coming in and I really don't want to be chasing and going to another sector it's just going to take too long so um, you know if you're one of those people that love to win and just jump from sector to sector this plane is definitely not for you this one does not do well at jumping from sector to sector you do need to if you are playing it that way you're doing it wrong um, I'm sorry but you, you're doing it wrong you're not putting the plane in its best situation its best environment uh, you do need to find center objectives and camp it if there isn't any center objective well I mean clearly clearly you're gonna have to go and find a sector but just make sure you try to find the most contested sector because this plane can do well under pressure as long as you're not getting shot but you know as long you, with your incredible maneuverability you can usually dodge most attacks and right now it's pretty dull there's not really a whole lot of action going on not a lot of planes are coming into the center right now I'm clearing them out too fast but we got KI-43-2 coming back in so let's go take him out and as you can see I mean the range is not bad. Most, most of the time when you have a turn and burner, you have really terrible range, but these guns are excellent for this plane. So, you know, the maneuverability and the guns are definitely the best points of this plane. And as long as you can keep the guns firing and keep yourself maneuvering, you are good. But I mean, look at this BF-110E. He's trying to escape and uh, my guns can still hit him at 2,000 feet. Uh, of course, those are only the 20s that are hitting at that range. But it just goes to show that uh, you really do have nice range. We got lightning coming in. I'm trying to get him to overshoot, which he does. So now I can hit him while he's trying to escape. And that's where the range of the guns come in. And, you know, the guns do overheat kind of fast. So you have to be selective with your firing. Don't just hold down the trigger. Um, your 13.2s never overheat. But uh, they're not the main force of your firepower. The main force is your 20s, and so you do have to be very selective with your firing, or you're only going to be firing with your 13.2s, and you're going to take a long time to kill things. So you need to have gun discipline, and yeah. That guy dies as well, super easy. Now everything's flying high. I'm in my yellow zone. I, I really shouldn't be up here, but, you know, you got to go where the planes are. Yeah, I, I do find a lower target, so I'm going to go after the lower target first. This is the third time he's come into uh, uh, this battle. <laughs> he just, he's just he got an itching for being destroyed by my plane. <laughs> Can't complain. He'll just die. Anyway. Going back down to get some repairs because I was injured. And we have a low point right now. Uh, a kind of a waiting period. So, you know, that's kind of the gameplay style you're going to have to adapt to. Um, but with that being said, I don't recommend camping a sector in the back, right? If you look, we have a garrison uh, down in the bottom right. It's the only other sector we have right now. Uh, but camping that would be stupid because there's no enemy planes that are really going over there. Uh, and the, any planes that do go over there are just, they don't go over very quickly. So I know that the airfield is more important as it's the only uh, special sector in this battle. All the rest are just plain old garrisons. So holding it is my top priority. Um, and as long as we have the airfield, it allows me to repair myself uh, with my terrible survivability that will help a lot. And also uh, it allows our team to respawn closer to target. So our GAs don't have to travel as far and stuff like that. So we have an FW-190A5, he's kind of turning and going away from us, but you know, our 20s, no issue with uh, going that distance. Even our 13.2s can hit at, that, hit at that distance, so he dies very quickly. And you know, of, of course, the closer you get to the target, the better, but you, you really are quite slow. You do not have good airspeed, uh, and your boost is not exceptional at all, and because of that, uh, you're going to have to rely on the range of your guns more than maneuverability uh, much of the time. So as long as you're hitting with your guns, you're fine. I dropped down a little bit to get some more repairs because uh, I'm cheeky like that. 
got repairs, so let's, let's get back into the gameplay. So, we get back into the dogfight. We have 110 e he's trying to get away, and of course the 20s say no, no sir, you will not escape. We got a GA down below, or an XFL1, which is the better target? Well, he's closer, so he's the better target. <laughs> I tricked you, didn't I? I thought you guys were going to say go XFL1. Well, now the XFL1 is in range, so now he's an acceptable target, which I think he is. Um, to, getting hit by tail gunners is not cool in this plane. I, I, I really don't want to be getting stuck attacking ground pounders. I know it is squall line, but I want to squall the uh, actual air killing targets, like the Yak and the Hurricane. Taking out those planes first is more of, a, more of importance to me than killing a stupid GA. Um, just because, you know, if the, you know, the fighters are the most dangerous to me. And uh, it looks like the GA is dead already, so at least that's good. 110E is coming in, so use the range of the 20s to hit him pretty hard. And we do, we do get quite a few shots. He's trying to escape, which, you know, not an issue. He's trying to do a flip over. Uh, terrible decision. I am in a zero. <laughs> If, if you're getting shot by this plane, do not maneuver with it. Uh, instead, try to use airspeed. Even if you don't think you have good airspeed, try to gain some distance. Any distance is better than no distance, because if you're stuck in a maneuvering combat with this plane, well, you might as well be dead already. So, um, Just because it's got such exceptional, exceptional maneuverability. KI-43-2 is in yet again. He just does not learn. Uh, he dies, but not to me this time. I'm sure he's very glad about that. 110E is leaving, not an issue. And 190A5 is coming in. So, he's gonna die. Awesome, he's dead. We had 666 uh, points just a second ago, now we're at 675. So, that's cool. Uh, there's only a couple planes left, so let's go see if we can take him out. 110E is inbound, so we're just going to put some shots onto him as he's going. Let my 20s cool down as I get back on target, and shut him down. Awesome. He is dead. Now we have a P40 coming in, so he's the next target. I'm going to use the 20s to hit him. And as you can see, you know, I really haven't had too, ma too many maneuvering fights. I really have to rely on the range of the guns more than anything. Uh, we got another, uh, what is that, KI something. He's going to die. Yep, he's dead. And that was the last plane. So just like that, we made 25,000 personal points, and that's when we still had mastery points as well. So you have that as well. As, as well. Um, someone told me a nice game, so thank you very much. I appreciate that. Uh, I, got, I got a whole bunch of medals. Uh, I don't know what it is with that, but it just kind of happened. Um, we got, like, Hunt for Falcon, Help for Condor, Hunt for something else uh, the heavy fighter multi role and fighter award which is pretty sweet uh, we got a whole bunch of other medals um, I just went through them so if you want to look at them they are all there for you to look at uh, but with that being said we're gonna jump into the results results screen real quick and then I'm gonna talk about uh, whether or not I think this plane is worth it so is the plane worth it yes this plane is really, really fun. Uh, it's got three terrible attributes. It's airspeed, it's survivability, and uh, what was the other one? Altitude performance. Those are the three things that really suck on this plane. Um, but other than that, uh, you have top tier maneuverability and excellent guns. And as long as you're keeping that in mind and you're not going from sector, sector to sector, but you're defending those important sectors, you're going to do just fine in this plane. Uh, that is where this plane shines. It just shines. Oh, Hunt for Hawk. That was the other one. And, of course, we got Guardian. So, yeah, that was still when Mastery Points were a thing. Mastery Points are not a thing anymore. Uh, that was the record number of aircraft destroyed in a single battle, which was 23 for me. Uh, since then, that has been broken. I think my record now is 26 uh, enemy aircraft in one battle. But, you know, that was a record back then. I did not even have the best engine, so, you know, you have to keep that in mind. And I had no equipment on either, uh, so you really do have to realize that, that this is possible 
with a not fully upgraded plane, with no equipment, uh, with only Marksman 1 on my pilot, uh, this plane has potential, and it's a very fun plane. It, it's highly recommended. Of course, that was standard ammo. I wasn't even using uh, universal. So that is the A6M50. It is well worth it, and uh, it's a very fun plane. Very fun plane. It's you know the Spitfire is a little bit more well-rounded, and this plane is much more niche. It's super exceptional in some regards, but worst at the tier in other regards. So, you know, as long as you know where to play this plane, you're set. And I know most people find the turn and burn play style the best or the easiest. So most people uh, find this plane quite fun. Uh, the whole line in this Japanese line is actually really fun. So anyway, that's enough said. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, re review. And please leave a comment down below what you think on the plane. And, you know, just anything else. I love reading comments. And I will catch you next time.